Here we are, this is our assignment for uh, Farm the Habitat. River. Our group consists of the river. Adam Cooper, Elliot, <laughs> and uh, me, Liam Dixon. Uh, we're currently in Shepherd's Pit assessing one of the buffer strips, which is a bit raggedy. Uh, and uh, here's Adam Cooper with some information on buffer strips. Basically, buffer strips are field margins that you leave and uh, wild plants grow and stop putting your feet on me. Um, and wildlife, such as badgers, birds, gypsies, can uh, hide in this place away from predators. And uh, this is also, also one of the also, early, I don't know, this is one of the, also one of the only buffer strips that the college has on their whole farm. As you can see, there's a stream. I can't hear you! It's going past us. This is perfect for waterfalls, uh, beavers, yes. all sorts of livestock to drink out of. You know, it's a really, really good thing for the, uh, for the farm. Shepherd's Pit is also a permanent pasture a system that the college have in place. Uh, it's one of the many fields that the college have that they are using the permanent pasture system on. We, are, we will be in the overwintered stub in approximately one minute. Still. <laughs> we're going to First Park. Okay, we're going to First Park. We're go as, you, as you heard, we're going to First Park, which is just up the drive from college. What are your thoughts on First Park, Liam? Well, you have to keep cutting it's it. The biggest field the college have. Pardon? It's the biggest field the college have, isn't it? Is it? That's an interesting fact. I didn't really think of that. One well, of the previous crops that went uh, first park hoops. Wheat? Went to wheat. Yes, that's the one. And barley. And, and uh, barley. Trials crop barley. You missed out the barley now. Trials crop barley. Just over this hedge is first park, our destination. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> we just did a handbrake turn, people. Oh my god. As you can see, here is a wild that jelly was, belly. That was beautiful. <laughs> that was beautiful. Oh, wait, no, no, the gate might hit the, the gate. Might no, we don't need to go in. Just view it from the other side. Oh. Here we are with David Attenborough. He's going to talk to us about the stubble in First Park. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, we're fine. currently in First Park. <laughs> It's <laughs> very unprofessional, David Attenborough. Come on. Well, this, <laughs> this is the biggest field the Dutchy College owned. Uh, they previously had winter wheat in this field, and uh, yes, and they had uh, barley trial crops. Did they? Where was that? Was that? Uh, that was over the hill. You can't see it right now, but uh, yes, I'm just over the hill. Do you spend um, a lot of time in Dutchy? Uh, no, no. I recently came and did a. Uh, uh, Interview with them and explained about the grey partridge. But how the heck do you know there was barley plots over there then? Oh, I, 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 they told me all this information, young lad. They did. They did. Oh, I have to say, you're you a, you a very handsome young fellow, if I can say so myself. <laughs> and, uh, oh, look, seeds? quickly, there's a, a grey partridge right there. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> this is, the this is why I came. rare footage this is the of, why of the wild grey partridge. We must follow him! <laughs> I'm an Edward. Oh, ah! David Algebra is struggling walking. Oh no! I didn't know you wore dealers, Sir David. But uh, basically, uh, at the moment, this is over winter stubble till spring. Uh, this ground now provides a, a natural environment for birds like larks and bloody what are little things <laughs> called that uh, abuse the farm. Uh, starlings! Uh, starlings, that's the one. Yes. Bloody pests. And uh, grape heart is just like the one we just seen. And uh, yeah, thank you for letting me explain on the overwinter stubble, Sir Adam Cooper. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Cheers. <laughs> ah! I didn't find on the hole. Oh, sorry. Do we have a partridge? <laughs> uh, he has a GPS located with him. He seems to think there's a great partridge near us. Yes, 
I've, I've been invited on the show today to talk about Great Partridge. This is for this is for the kids, uh, especially Adam Cooper, uh, Liam Dixon, and Elliot Rowe. This is for their distinction. Is it distinction? Yes. It's yes. For their distinction. <laughs> so um, here we have some idle cover for Partridge, Great Partridge, um, and the trouble that the work comes across these days is that uh, the population for Great Partridge has. Um, decreased from 1997 to 2003, um, purely for the fact that uh, there's no food source in the winter. So uh, places like Maintain, the hedges and uh, buffer strips and such, uh, uh, it allows the partridge to come in for food. How far away is this great partridge, Sir Elliot? I'm not too oh, sure, there? I can't. There? Oh, it's going around us. Oh. Bastard. <laughs> so David, that wasn't uh, funny. Just, that one just got shot. Oh no. Um, he's around here somewhere. I'm just gonna Should take... we should we walk up to try and find a yes, better place yes, to get I'll, into the I'll woods? I'll tell you some more a bit more um, about their nesting habits while we're walking through. Yes, um, I'm afraid my own legs won't bring me in there, you know. Great partridge like to uh, nest on the ground in hedges, um, uh, at the bottom of the hedges. Uh, they're also Yes, uh, they, uh, they've obviously, like I just said, they're nesting in hedges, bottom of the hedges around. Yes, brambles. Um, do they like brambles? And so, yeah, they do. They, they, it's, uh, they like an idle, thick cover to stay dry in this weather here. The trouble is, if they get wet and their feathers get wet, right, they uh, suffer from, you know, they're getting really cold. So, um, if I should carry on. <laughs> I should carry on. So such as ELS schemes now that farmers seem to get uh, beetle banks, uh, overwinter stubble, um, game covers, metal beds, uh, dead tucks on the grass, left from the previous particularly attractive for their nesting cover. Um, to their summer food, I know we're in the winter, but just to expand on the grey partridge, uh, their summer food is um, many things from chick feed on such as insects. Oh, and there we have a chap. Right. Yep, such as chick feeds, and they like that for insects, such as insects, especially caterpillars. <laughs> I'm sorry. Shut up. Especially caterpillars, beetles, bugs, and aphids. Breeding is more successful when there is plenty of this food available. Chicks take insects mainly within the crop, especially within the headlands. So it's very, very important. Um, an adult grey partridge in the winter would feed mainly on uh, the seeds that you would uh, you know, overwinter stubble. Which, you know, the shit combine driver might have left some seeds around that's germinating. Uh, and such as seeds that have been planted, they are bastards and they just like to eat everything. But in game covers, there is, they have a mixture of seeds that they will eat, which will give them plenty of nutrients for their growth and for their energy. Especially, the, the biggest problem is uh, coming across the shooting season as they are classed as a game bird. So people would pay a lot of money to come across and they go flat, flat, and then they get shot. What was that again? And so they die. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much for having me on this show. You have to find one for uh, us. Yeah, there isn't any. No, oh, sorry. you said there was some no, there, there isn't any around this sort of area. Oh, you were lying to us, Sir Elliot. Uh, we've thank given you, up. Thank, so you for, thank you very much for having me on this show, and I shall see you again soon. Hope this is a good enough information. <laughs> the end of our show, ladies and gentlemen. We are chasing the grey partridge back to his natural habitat. <laughs> oh shit. He seems to be able to drive a car. Right. Wasn't really Sir David Attenborough at all.